Hey guys, welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today we're going to be making an upgraded blast furnace and also getting ourselves some iron automated as well. Hopefully you guys are ready. All right, guys. So today we're going to be pushing ourselves more towards immersive engineering, but for the simple reason, um, it seems like immersive engineering is going to be our, our power generation in this pack uh, for the most part. So um, we have Ender IO and things like that, but uh, Ender IO doesn't produce a huge amount of power. Um, we can produce a good amount of power with Ender IO using the VAT and using our um, other generators that they have in Ender IO. The um, combustion generator can produce an okay amount of energy. Um, but really, other than that, there's not much that Enduro, Ender IO offers in, in uh, terms of power. So we need to find other means, and that would probably be going towards a diesel generator, which can pretty much sustain itself um, in this pack. And uh, we'll be able to push out, I think, close to 5,000 RF um, out of that guy. And from there, be able to get ourselves some uh, automated automated resource generation. So that would be pretty nice. I know this is a, a really easy way to generate resources, um, but that's not exactly what I'm going for at the moment. Uh, today, we're going to upgrade our blast furnace. So this is really slow. Um, I mean, it is it is really slow. So the one way to speed that up would be to make the upgraded blast furnace. And to make the upgraded blast furnace is not that difficult. It really isn't. Uh, it would require us to break down this blast furnace and just have some iron on us, pretty much. Um, now, we don't have that much iron at the moment. I do need to mine some more to get some more iron. But uh, we're doing a pretty good... I mean, we, we have iron. That's all that matters. But today, we're going to be using our hammer a lot from Immersive Engineering. So we're probably going to actually need to make another hammer. Um... I can see that in the future, but let's go ahead and break down this guy because we're going to need all of these resources. We're going to need all of our blast brick pretty much. And uh, that's what we're going to use to make the upgraded one. Okay. So we're going to need some iron. Now we're going to need 27 iron plates. And I don't know if you guys remember how to make those, but you have to use your hammer. And I hope we have enough durability. Nope, we don't. <laughs> we have to make another engineering hammer. So let's go back to immersive engineering. And we can make that engineer, engineer's hammer, um, which actually only requires a piece of string and two iron. Okay. I had to make sure. And we should have everything else. Okay. So bam, two iron, just like that, with a piece of string. Gets us another engineer's hammer, and I'm surprised we just got that. Oh, I think we got this in a quest. That's why we didn't get that achievement, but now we have it. And we can make the 27 that we need. Okay. So now that we have that 27, we can combine that with the blast brick, I do believe. It did show this. What's this used for? This makes reinforced blast brick. Oh, we need steel plates. Oh, that's right. Okay, so steel. That was my fault. <laughs> 27 steel. Perfect, here we go. 27 steel. We're still going to have to use that iron. Don't get me wrong. We'll have to have that iron today. And we'll combine that with our blast brick, and bam. 27 reinforced blast brick. Now we need our iron and one chest. We'll take the chest, and we'll make ourselves a hopper. And that's really all we need, is a hopper and the 27 blast brick. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to put this down here. I'm going to put it up against this window, blocking off our window. And you build it just like you built the other blast furnace, the crude blast furnace. Except this one gets a, a slot on the top. The hopper. And we click this with our hammer. And BAM! we get a better blast furnace. Um, now the slag gets outputted to the back, so I might want to actually bring this forward. Yeah, let's go ahead and break this thing. I'm gonna place it one forward. I know, you're probably yelling at me, 
but I'm going to place it one forward just because I can't access that back place. Uh-oh. How, how did that just come out of there? Okay, that's not what I just had in my hand. <laughs> okay, so there we go. Now we can build this thing up. And it's not as big as it looks, so having it near this window actually doesn't even block it. Which I'm kind of happy with. But we still have access to that back port. Which was a major concern of mine. Come on. That was my hopper. There we go. Now we can transform this thing. And up here is where we can input our iron. Right here, we're gonna we're gonna change those here in a minute. And back here, we can put a chest for slag, which we are going to do. Let's go ahead and get a chest. And I think a chest can go in the top as well. But I'm just gonna put a chest back here. That should auto input to a chest. Now this thing is okay. Um, it'll also output here into a chest. Um, this thing does use the coal, but it's a lot faster once we get what we're fixing to add next to it. And that is in our engineer's guide. Um, under heavy machine, improved blast furnace, and we go over to some pages, and we'll see we need an external heater and some iron sheets to be able to make this. So let's go ahead and get an external heater made. We need two of those. Two external heaters. which use copper coils and copper and iron and redstone. So we're gonna need to make some copper plates. Let's go ahead and just make 64 of them. And let's cut those all down in the wire. And let's get sticks. And bam, we'll just go ahead and turn these all into copper coils. There we go. And we can just convert these over. And we get our copper coil blocks. Simple as that. Okay. Next step is having some copper on us, which I just used all the copper. So there we go. Now we can make two of these external heaters. Bam. Now we need to make iron uh, blocks, which are made or iron sheets, which I think are made right like this. Okay, so almost how I had them made. Um, and we're gonna need a few of these, I think. I just don't remember how much. Let's go ahead and make 24 for now. That's more than enough. And now we can make two of these blast furnace preheaters. And those are gonna go on the sides. So blast furnace preheaters, that is not where I want you. One there, and one there. <laughs> so we have this horrible machine inside of our base that we probably shouldn't have in here. But now if I put a piece of iron in here, it goes, it goes a little bit faster. Um, oh, we need to power this thing. These both get, these both get power. So as you see, this is going just about as slow as the other way. But once we give this thing power, it will go really fast. Okay, so we need to get some power cable ran along here. I think I'm gonna run it across here, across this section, simply because it's already open like that. So yeah, it's this bottom half here. So bam, we can put cable right there. And it won't have, we won't have any issues. Okay. So I'll need two of these and a couple of those. Bam, now we should be good to go. So what I'll do is I'll have... Another line, I guess, ran here. And this will be another hole. 
and we can run this cable here to here, here to here, and hopefully hook this up to the ceiling. If we can, I don't think we'll be able to. Um, I might be able to hook it. Hook it right here. Up one. That might not work. I don't know if that has clear sight or not. I know that these both get these plugs. We'll hook the cable there and hook them down here. Oh, they do work. Okay. So now these are getting power. We're looking good. I can close this back off. And hide everything as if it didn't even exist. Okay. Bam, just like that. And the only spot that's open is so I could use that. So now let's go back down and now see how fast this is actually producing. So that one steel did not produce very fast. Now it's going a lot faster. A whole lot faster. So I can split this up and do quite a bit more steel. And it may actually go faster depending on how long this is running. So I think it's the longer it runs, the faster it goes. I don't remember. But, ah, it gets exported into the back. I don't think we can... Yeah, we can. There we go. Slide gets imported in the back. And I think if we put a chest in the front, it'll automatically output, output to the chest. And then we can set a hopper on top and have iron go into it. So that way we can automate it. So there we go. And so let's get ourselves a hopper. I think we can even use a chest. I think a chest on top actually works. Let's, uh, let's try that. No? Okay. So yeah, I think it has to be a hopper. Or you can just drop the items in, I guess, using a dropper. Right? Does that actually work? Nope. Yeah, we have to use a hopper, I guess. <laughs> uh, you, you know, you experiment and then you learn. Uh, so believe it or not, I've played with immersive engineering quite a bit and never made this thing. So there we go. Hopper goes on top and everything works and can be automated. So we can let it go and not have to worry about this thing. But we still have to have cold coke. So that is another thing. Um, these both require power. And other than that, this guy is good. This guy is good to go. So making steel is going to become a lot easier on us. Now, there are a few other machines that we're going to need to make uh, here real soon. And we can kind of look at what it's going to require to get those. And we're going to need a crusher. Squeezer. Um, we're going to need a fermenter and a refinery, and eventually we'll be able to get into the, well, I don't even see it in here. Um, no. See, oh, the refinery. Where's the diesel generator? Is it not even in here anymore? Oh, it's under power. Yeah, the diesel generator. There we go. So... I have been running low on iron, and I just wanted to go ahead and fix that as well in this episode. Um, I don't think I'm going to have to worry about iron after today. Um, but if we take a look at our guide, which I haven't done quite a bit, but I have been completing a lot of quests. As you can see, I've tiered all the way up to Supremium. Um, I have the ability right now to make the highest tiered armor. Um, my settings, I guess, got messed up. There we go. I have the ability to make the highest tier armor in mystical agriculture. So I could do that if I really wanted to. I mean, it would take a little bit of time to get all this stuff done, but uh, uh, I would actually, have, well, I'd have to get another star and stuff. I don't have another star, so maybe not. Maybe I won't, wouldn't be able to do this, but this stuff would give me flight. 
but I would need a nether star for every single one. So I need four nether stars to be able to uh, progress because each one requires this. Um, so we also need a wither skeleton skull farm. But with Woot, you can make a nether skull, or uh, you can make a wither uh, farm. So that wouldn't become too difficult. Uh, but we need to get some iron. I'm kind of getting distracted here. We need iron seeds, and that requires the uh, intermedium essence. For that, with a tier 3 crafting seed, which requires intermedium essence and a tier 2 crafting seed. So I think we have crafting seeds laying around in here, right? Um, no. I need to make some crafting seeds. So, to get crafting seeds, that's not what we need. Where are the crafting seeds themselves? Actually, let's just see what it takes to make the crafting seeds. So that requires the base. Okay, so four prosperity shards and a seed. So let's grab all these prosperity shards and we'll go find some seeds. I actually might need to uh, put some of these seeds inside or put, put one of these. There we go. All we have is 44. Yeah, I might need to set up, uh, set another one, one of these cloches up and use it to make seeds because we're going to need a lot of them for crafting different types of seeds. Um, but for right now, we're going to turn all of these, if I can, alloys, all but one. Because we can use that later on. But we're going to get ourselves some base seeds. And these are used with each essence to produce a higher tier seed. Okay. So not too bad. Okay, and we have seeds left over. Good. Good, good, good. I will keep those seeds for later. Alright, and we need a tier 3, correct? So we're going to need this one upgraded. So we're going to need four of the regular essence. So we'll do that. That gives us this tier seed. And isn't it four to go up to the next one? Yes. So four of this. That'll give us a tier two. And some of this. There we go. And that will get us an iron seed real quick. So once this is done, well, the ability to make an iron seed. So how much how much do we need to make this? Okay, so we can make tin, iron, zinc, brass. Okay, where's the iron? <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. Um, did I miss it actually for the iron? Okay, iron is made like this. So four iron. Okay, and then four of this. We need to actually break one of these down. There we go. That's more than enough. Throw all that, all that in the pot, and bam, we get an iron seed. So now, getting iron is no longer going to be an issue. Um, I actually think that this ice essence drawer, let's take the ice out of here, put an iron seed in here, remove all of this, because we no longer need this in here. This is going to start producing again, but it's going to be producing iron essence and iron seeds. And we're going to use some packaging tape, which you probably haven't seen before, but we're going to do that. Instead of using a dolly, I'm going to try the packaging tape. So storage drawers has this thing called packaging tape, which is paper and a slime ball. So, three paper and a slime ball gives you the packing tape. And this lets you slap packaging tape on here. And you should be able to mine it with an axe. And you get your drawer back. And it has packaging tape and everything on it. And it should be just fine. And you can place it down and it's full just like it was before. How cool is that? Okay, so we're going to actually go ahead and get ourselves another basic drawer here. And now we're going to have practically unlimited, uh, yeah, completely unlimited iron. And this essence is used, let's see, how does it actually make 
Iron. Okay, so six iron. Yeah, from from this. Just letting this run for a short period of time, we have six iron. Bam, just like that. Unbelievable. Um, I also wanted to show real quick, because I know this is getting, uh, we're getting kind of out of hand here. Let's actually delete some of this, because we don't need any of this stuff anymore. Uh, we only need one ice seed. And I would like to keep this in a certain place, but right now I really don't have anywhere to put this. Um, I would like to make the auto crafter. So let's take a look at that. Um, it's actually through Ender IO. I think it's called an auto crafter, or it's called a crafting crafter. There we go. So it requires a machine, a machine chassis, and a Z logic. So a zombie head, some solarium, and silicon. So two silicon, one of this. And two solarium and a zombie head. Which we should have everything here. So I can throw this all into our slice and splice. That's gonna start producing that here in a little bit. Alright, so what I'm gonna do is instead of using this section that I have right here, I'm gonna break this table, take our crystal that we're gonna need, this right here, the infusion crystal, and hopefully this will work. Okay, so we have this. I need to give it power, so I'm gonna give it power just like so. Hook it up to here. And now it's gonna generate some power. I'm going to need to feed it a crafting recipe. So this will be your input. And I'll make sure this is the only slots that get filled and it's gonna produce this essence. All right, and now I need to pump the essence, pump the items into it. So just like this. Extract always active, insert, and it's going to create, oh wait, you don't need to do that. Like this. There we go. It should keep producing this stuff. <laughs> oh, there it goes. It's sending it everywhere for some reason. Um... Okay, <laughs> let's let's stop this. Um, it should be shooting it out everywhere. Uh, we need to actually give it a storage area, I guess. Um, wasn't expecting it to start spitting out stuff all over the place. So here's this, this drawer right here. It's not a basic drawer. I don't think you can convert them back or anything like that, but... Yeah, it's just a drawer with multiple slots. Alright, so I should be able to take this drawer and set this to output. Or actually, we probably don't even need the conduit here. Man, we got stuff all over the place. Is this still making it? Shouldn't. All right, we can set this to pull, push, there we go. So it's gonna push the items into here every time it receives enough items. So we'll set this to always active and it's gonna keep producing this essence until it runs out. I hope that once it fills this up that it doesn't uh, continue making it and just spilling it all on the ground. That would not be good. That is not what I want. But I, I can't automatically create this stuff now. And what I can do is actually power this from the back and have a, a row of these. And just continue to produce them. So have this one go into another one and can bring all the way up to Superium Essence. Or Supremium Essence. So that's what I might end up doing. Because this only gets you so far. Um, buffer, single items, show recipes, configure IO. Yeah. And I think if I set this to um, active, active with signal, active without signal, it should continue to run. And then as soon as I give this a signal, it will stop producing. So, there we go. That's a way I can turn it off so I can monitor it. 
But this guy, I'll, I'm going to make it like this for now, but uh, until I make a few more of these and actually get some more zombie heads, because right now I'm lacking on zombie heads. So I'll have to do some zombie farming. Um, but we're all doing this all in prep to get ourselves a system. I don't know if I'm going to go straight and do the inventory panel system, but we can. Um, I'm really wanting to move on and get straight into more advanced stuff, not using Ender IO. So getting into refined storage. That would be my ultimate goal, I guess. And getting this stuff is not too expensive. Um, so quartz and rich iron, we just need iron and we can always make quartz enriched iron. So this is not going to be hard to get once we do get that. Um, yeah, we just need to make quartz enriched iron seeds. And I think we'll be good to go. Yeah, totally. Well, you know, this has been, uh, been a pretty good episode. Pretty good episode, I think. Um, if you guys enjoyed this series and have, have been enjoying this series so far, um, Give this video a thumbs up. I mean, just, yeah, just sit there and smack that thumbs up button. Give it a good punch. I really appreciate it. Um, if you guys haven't subscribed already, I really recommend subscribing. There's link down below that will link you to my Discord so you can chat around there and get to know the community a little bit better, um, especially if you're new around here. Yeah, if you're new, you could uh, definitely find some friends there. Um, but yeah, there's also a link to my Patreon down below if you guys want to check that out and do some supporting. I would really appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching.